Hello gamers, Yoshi here, and in today's video I will be updating my PvE tier list to reflect patch 3.2.1. If you are viewing this in a future season that is not in Season of the Splicer, so Season 14, and if you are viewing this in Season 15 or Season 16, just note many changes may have been made to the game since the release of this video. And before I get into it, I just want to say this is a longer video, especially a lot longer, about 40 minutes longer than the first tier list video. This is because for this video, I actually have a few areas I'm assessing, so rules that I'm using for assigning the tiers for these exotics. First rule or area I'll be assessing is how the exotic performs in end game content like raids, nightfalls, and hard mode activities. And this includes using these exotics while you're at level for these activities and while you're under level for some of these activities. The next area I'll be looking at is how the exotic performs in its slot and its type. And this means how a kinetic exotic performs against other kinetic exo exotics and how a hand cannon exotic performs against other hand cannon exotics. The third area I'll be looking at is how the exotic performs in general ad clear. So this is ad clear for raids, nightfalls, or contest mode activities. And the fourth area I'll be looking at is usage metrics. Do people actually use certain exotics? When I load up into a match and I inspect my random teammates' loadouts, are they actually using certain exotics? Do I see a certain exotic, exotic being used a lot? Or do I actually notice, hey, this person's actually using Fighting Lion, or he's actually using Dead Man's Tail? So those are the, some of the areas I'm going to be looking at when assessing exotics in this tier list. I also want to say that I will be examining how exotics interact with artifact mods um, from this season, but this examination will not affect its final tiering. I will make comments about this and I will talk about how the certain mods affect the roles that some of these exotics play, but this relationship won't affect the final tiering of the exotic. The reason I'm not doing it this way this time around is because the mods change from season to season and most of the mods aren't really used in all the content, even though some of the mods are, but I kind of want to just avoid this confusion. I think uh, it might've been a little confusing why I rated some exotics from the past tier list so highly and others not as high. Next thing I want to say is that I will not be assessing how weapons perform when using builds because there are a lot of niche and underperforming exotics that actually do a lot better with certain builds and certain mods. But the thing is, that some people don't have all the mods or they don't have certain mods that make some of these exotics really good. And if I were to give an exotic an S tier rating using a certain mod that someone else doesn't have access to, well, that same exotic isn't gonna be S tier for them as well. And lastly, I wanna say I will be assessing how these exotics perform in patrol and strikes, but this assessment will be less weighted towards the overall tier because let's be real, quite literally almost everything well there are a few exotics that don't perform in patrol or in strikes but most most often not every exotic performs extremely well in these normal mode um, strikes and patrol areas and then before i transition into the tier list i just want to note that this is a pc focused tier list i am not a console player i have never played on console uh, so i don't know if this tier list will exactly translate that well from PC to console. So just know your experience will vary quite differently from mine since I am on PC. And the other thing I want to mention is that I have actually used a lot of these exotics in the past few weeks and different forms of content like raids and in the nightfalls and as well as the normal mode activities. And I have actually damage tested a lot of these weapons against legendary weapons and other weapons of their category to see how they perform. And a lot of weapons that may seem good to you guys on paper aren't actually that useful at all. And this tier list will reflect where they actually stand. So uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, so this is the beginning of the patch 3.2.1 tier list. And let's get right into it. So in the last tier list i did you'll remember i think a lot of these exotics were affected by the artifact mods however this is completely fresh again so don't be confused i will be placing a lot of these exotics a lot lower than 
what I have previously given them in the last tier list. So don't be shocked if you see TQs much lower than S tier uh, the last time. And again, I'll be looking at those four areas, uh, try to assess where each of these exotics belong. So why don't we get into everyone's favorite is sniper rifles. So the first sniper we have here is CloudStrike. CloudStrike actually tested this quite recently, was today um, actually, is there were some claims that CloudStrike was pretty good against bosses However, if you actually use Cloud Strike, and even though it does have the lightning strikes that proc after three rapid hits, is that you'll know that certain legendary weapons, especially legendary sniper rifles with triple tap, can pretty much out damage uh, Cloud Strike. And that's especially if you have a god rolled sniper rifle, like with triple tap and rapid fire or not rapid fire, excuse me, rapid hit. And if you have a boss spec on it, I even use the Iron Banner sniper rifle with Vorpal and I didn't even have a boss spec on it. Uh, and it was hitting about 8,000 more damage than what Cloud Strike was able to do. Um, so Cloud Strike is good and it has potential for good ad clear, especially, um, I would say more for like strikes I don't know how often you're going to be using a sniper rifle for general ad clear. Typically you're using like a primary weapon, like an SMG, like a, huck, a huckleberry. Huckleberry you would want to use for ad clear more over this. I mean, I'm not denying that Cloud Strike can definitely do it. It's just typically in this game, you're saving your special ammo for uh, boss damage for... Um, you know major damage or mini bosses or champions but cloud strike really it's just it's not great it's good but it's not great it's definitely not bad either i definitely would say cloud strike right now especially is probably a c tier it used to be a little bit higher because it actually had a bug when it interacted with certain exotics like divinity where you could get the perk to proc faster um, because the divinity bubble counted as like a fake crit for it, if you will. Uh, and Cloud Strike was able to do a lot of damage against certain bosses, especially the bosses like Tanix um, in the raid if you've done Deepstone Crypt. However, ever since that nerf, Cloud Strike really, I've not seen it used a lot. When I've done Deepstone Crypt, people would rather use slug rifles than use um, Cloud Strike people would rather use Anarchy uh, than use Cloud Strike. I know Anarchy is kind of a bad exotic to compare this one to because they're not in the same slot. It's just remember when you're using you're filling your exotic slot, you ha you're for foregoing any of these other exotics, and you have to reasonably tell me that hey, I would use Cloud Strike over another exotic like Anarchy. Uh, in slot, I would probably use Cloud Strike over um, Borealis. For sure, I don't think Borealis is as good as a sniper or as good as an energy weapon. Um, definitely, it's definitely better than something like Mythoclass right now. Um, probably better than Cold Cold Heart. Uh, definitely better than Cold Heart. Uh, the other snipers in here. I wouldn't say it's better than Whisper though. I would say Whisper is definitely better than uh, Cloud Strike right now, uh, just in terms of the damage department. Um, right now, I'm just gonna leave Cloud Strike at a at, at a C. Um, I think it might be a high C, like C plus or even B. But based off of what I've seen, Cloud Strike really isn't doing it right now. I think it kind of needs a little buff at least to the damage department. The next sniper rifle we have here is Borealis. Uh, Borealis is awful. I wouldn't say it's completely useless being an F tier, but it's not better than Cloud Strike. I can tell you that uh, that much. I have not seen anyone use this exotic in a long, long time. Even back when anti-barrier existed, 
there was a lot of people claiming that, oh, now that anti-barrier sniper exists, we can use Borealis because it covers all the elements. Well, that's not the case. If you're in an ordeal and you want to be doing the most damage you can with the least amount of effort, you're going to take an exotic like Anarchy or Izanagi's over Borealis. You can just synergize with your team to have different weapons that cover Arc, Solar, Void. You don't need Borealis to do that. And plus, it's a pain in the butt switching between each of the different um, Solar, Arc, or Void options. And then on top of that, its perks really are just dated. It's a year one exotic that just can't perform against a lot of these year two, year three, and year four exotics. So D tier from me. Uh, the next sniper rifle we have is Darcy. Darcy is just, it's, it's a little better I'd say than Borealis, but they're still on the same team. And I would not say it's better than CloudStrike. The role that Darcy used to fill no longer exists. It used to be really good in Scourge of the Past, when Scourge of the Past was still a raid. Uh, uh, for you who don't know what Scourge of the Past was, it was a nice little raid where Darcy definitely excelled in, especially at the boss where you're just standing still and able to plink at away. However, a lot of raid DPS now relies on being able to do burst damage. Darcy really doesn't have the best burst damage. It doesn't even have the best sustain damage in terms of other exotics in its slot and the heavy slot, pretty much everything outclasses it. But I wouldn't go as far to say that it is F tier. It still definitely is somewhat decent. It's just not, it's not good enough. Um, it might have some uses in raids, but I don't know. It really doesn't have uses in Nightfalls. I really have not seen anyone ever use Darcy. Not even hard mode activities. But it's not, it still has potential to do damage. So it's not completely useless, which is what the F tier really is reserved for. Um, it's just D tier. It's It really needs a buff. Uh, and whether or not that buff is switching it to special or not, if it switches to a special um, ammo using weapon, it might lose some of its damage, so I really don't know what Bungie's fix for Darcy is going to be. Moving on, the next sniper rifle we have is Izanagi's, and actually use this today as well, uh, S tier still. Um, it still does a ton of damage, especially if you have the Catalyst and you proc Cone Edge. This thing absolutely destroys ads. Of course, you're not going to be using Izanagi's for general ad clear, so obviously it's going to lose some points there, but that's really not the focus of this weapon. This weapon absolutely slays bosses. It slays um, raid bosses. Well, obviously it doesn't nuke them, but it does significant amounts of damage to raid bosses. It's very good to use against champions, especially if you have things like Divinity to combo it with to make that crit spot larger. It's very good in hard mode activities, especially if you're at level GM when you're under level, you still nuke the champions. Um, I still see a lot of people using this. Uh, probably not as much as before, especially since it's locked behind the exotic kiosk, so it is a little harder to obtain. However, when I go on things like the forums on like Reddit and a lot of people who are new to the game, they ask, what should I get from the exotic kiosk? I keep seeing Izanagi's burden mentioned like a million times, especially if you don't have access to uh, raids or if raids aren't your thing, you're not going to have access to spoils, which would get you something like anarchy next. Um, but Izanagi's is S tier, uh, the undisputed king of the sniper rifles it is still amazing uh even after the uh reload nerfs it received so still a very 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 good weapon uh the next sniper rifle we have here is 
want to make sure I get them all. Sometimes I miss a few. I know there's that, but I think that's it. So we have Whisper coming up next. I think Whisper is A tier. I actually used this in a GM and it sucked a lot, especially for how much ammo it had and its ability to auto reload and how Whisper Breathing works. It's just not it's not good. And especially for endgame content that includes champions, Whisper is not it. If you stun a champion and then swap to Whisper, the time it takes for you to proc Whisper Breathing, this is assuming you have the catalyst, well, that champion immediately just becomes unstunned and you're not gonna be doing that stun damage to the champion. Unless you have someone stunning the champion for you and then you are already ready with whisper breathing proc then you can get more out of whisper but the amount of damage you're doing to that champion with whisper breathing proc is not enough uh for me to consider continuing to use it something like 1000 voices is a lot easier to use than whisper in the heavy slot mind you and just I, i'm pretty sure 1k does more damage than whisper and things like patrol and general like normal mode strikes whisper is amazing it does a ton of damage um especially with with spur breathing proct uh, it definitely outclasses weapons like cloud strike and darcy and borealis of course it's not outclassing the damage that izanagi's can offer uh more so because izanagi's has better burst dps of course whispered has better um over time dps but most of the time you're not going to be able to pop off all of whisper shots or to be able to be standing still for that long of a time period especially in end game content gms where everything insta kills you um standing still for three seconds with to proc whisper breathing to get off one shot you're probably gonna die if you do that whereas with it is anagis you proc the hone end shot you you take a quick peek, you get the shot off, and then you go back into cover. Um, it's just, it's good. It's still definitely good and excels on a lot of content. And I do still see a lot of people using it. It's just personally, I cannot give it the S tier. It's just not good enough to be S tier, like how Izanagi's is. It's, it's just hard stuck A tier for me, really. Um, and I think that covers all the sniper rifles. So let me just double check here. We got all the sniper rifles. And I apologize. I know this video is going to be long, but that's that's just my channel. I like to examine how these exotics are. I want to go in depth with them. I don't want to give you just like, oh, A, S, F, and then no reason behind that or no in-depth reason behind it. So the next area we're gonna look at, we're gonna start with the favorites here. We're gonna go into hand cannons. Ace of Spades, while very good in PvP, especially during the current meta of PvP since the 120s uh, recently got nerfed, Ace is not that great in PvE. It's fun to use for sure with Firefly and Mentomori. It does a lot of damage against Red Bars. It can be very satisfying to use. However, I just think there are at least in its kinetic slot, there are legendary weapons that can just do it better than Ace of Spades. And the other thing is that you're not going to bring, be bringing Ace into things like raids, like Nightfalls, hard mode activities, where you want your exotics to be doing the most possible damage for you, or if not, the most possible ag clearing potential. Ace... And hard mode activities does not one shot most red bars um, at that point. It's not doing that for you anymore. It's definitely good in low tier content, but in high tier content, which most of you guys are playing, it's not going to do it for you. Um, I feel like giving it C tier right now is a bit too lenient. I would say it's like D tier. I would not say it's F tier, it's not completely useless. But it's not at a point where I see a lot of people using it, where I personally would use it, or even would recommend using it. 
However, if you're playing PvP, definitely use Ace. It is still a top dog in PvP. But PvE, that is another story. Next up, we have Crimson. Crimson, when you get a headshot, it auto reloads the weapon. You technically have infinite ammo. It also, um, excuse me, I'm drinking some water here. It also heals you after you get a kill. It's a very okay weapon. Um, the healing definitely is very nice, especially as it has infinite ammo. But right now, I know in the last video, I kind of bullied hand cannons, especially the Forsaken hand cannons. I just don't think hand cannons are in a very good spot right now in PvE. I think hand cannons right now, they need to have a damage buff, especially against red bars. Because even against red bars, like the fact that half, or I think I would say more than half of the hand cannons I'm about to review can't even kill certain red bars like Vandals um, with one shot. And I know there's probably a reason behind why Bungie nerfed a lot of the hand cannons in the game and scout rifles in the game. Because um, at the time we were very powerful and it just, I, I don't know if it reflected their vision of how they want these guns to perform. It's just, right now, they're very underwhelming. However, I will say Crimson does have benefits over Ace because healing is a lot more important in endgame content and um, harder content where you're trying to stay alive than you know getting a temporary damage boost that you completely lose when you swap off of Ace. Um, uh, and who cares about enhanced radar when radar is pretty much disabled in most forms of content that you get from Ace. Uh, I think Crimson is just giving you a little bit more than what Ace is giving you. And in the kinetic slot, it's like, remember, Crimson's got to compete with something like Izanagi's. It's got to compete with something like Dead Man's Tale. It's got to compete with something like... I don't know Monte Carlo. Uh, well, Monte Carlo. We'll get we'll get to the autos in a little bit, but you know it's got to compete with something like what else we got here? Hawk Moon. Um, can you really say Crimson is better than Hawk Moon or is better than Izanagi's? I don't think so. Uh, next hand cannon we got is a very good one. Still very good is Ariana's Vow. Ariana's Vow s tier for me still um the fact that it's anti-barrier it's a special weapon you're uh, when you have the glance procced you do bonus damage on that shot if you have the catalyst it buffs its mag capacity up to nine and you get auto loading on it a very very nice perk to have uh it's anti-barrier uh, i think i'm not sure if i mentioned that it, it's anti-barrier and it just it does damage it does work it's like a pocket sniper rifle um i'd say it's better than whisper because you get more ammo it's a lot easier to find special ammo than it is to find heavy ammo for whisper you don't have to wait three seconds to proc its uh, first shot perk uh it auto loads even though this technically auto loads whisper technically auto loads but that is if you're hitting crits and that's not easy to do when a lot of bosses are moving around uh, with this, it's a little bit more forgiving if you're missing your shots than it is when you're missing shots with something like this. Uh, and anti-barrier, I know, not looking at artifact mods, but this thing technically has an artifact mod built into it. It will always be useful, uh, Arianus, for anti-barrier content. And I even saw uh, Dado, if you know who Dado is, he makes a lot of uh, Destiny 2 content and guides. I saw him using this in Master Vog, so if he considered taking this into Master Vog, then it definitely is is probably doing the work that he needed it to do. And for me, it still does the work that I needed to do. While yes, you're probably not using it for general ad clear, you, you might be using it to kill majors for sure. Uh, uh, Levin bars. I don't know what color you guys see. I see them as orange bars, majors. I'm using colorblind settings, so that's what I see. 
I don't know how many raids you're going to bring this into, um, aside from maybe Master Vog, if you're experimenting, um, or if you don't have the right weapons. Nightfalls, it's de definitely still a good option uh, if you don't like the anti-barrier that's available to you. And then hard mode activities, uh, it, it's a pretty good pick, I'd say, still. Um, especially with Catalyst. With everything that you get off of Catalyst, Arianus is a great weapon to use. The next hand cannon we'll be looking at is... Malfeasance. Malfeasance... Oh, we have Luna. I'll go back to Lumina. Malfeasance sucks. A lot. Um... Yes, its purpose is to be used in Gambit Prime. At the time, it was Gambit Prime, really. Uh, it, now it's Gambit, excuse me. Rest in peace, Gambit Prime. Uh, in Gambit, against Taken, you do bonus damage to Taken. You stack five shots. It does that huge explosion. However, that huge explosion now is very lackluster. And even in Patrol... It feels like this thing struggles like to just do any damage especially with the whole the whole nerf to hand cannons um, and their ability to do damage to certain red bars it just is not good like I I can't even say Malfeasance is in the same category as Ace um, I take Ace over Malfeasance because there are only there are only so many enemies in this game that are taken so you're only going to benefit from that bonus damage to take in so much from Malfeasance. Uh, yes, it's a 180 and it has 20 rounds in the mag where Ace does not have that many rounds in the mag. But it's just so not good right now. And I don't think I have seen anyone use Malfeasance in like this season or the past few seasons. It's just... It's, it's a dead exotic. It's just, it's truly a dead exotic. It's a useless exotic. Um, I don't think I have to go more into the uh, areas of uh, why Malfeasance is bad. But next up, we'll be talking about Lumina. Skipped over this one. Lumina, it's okay. I definitely think it could be a lot better, but it's just... It just exists. I think if you're a warlock and you're playing well, uh, if you're playing well warlock, it's definitely very good because you can buff your opponents and you can technically, it gives them benevolent, um, uh, the benevolent buff to heal them or, or not to heal, heal them, but it gives you the ability regen, excuse me. It, but it's just such a like niche exotic that it, it's not very good and it's not even good for like ad clear really like lumina is that's f tier i'm sorry it's like ace at least ace gets the damage buff and you get firefly and you get the bonus reload and like the radar when radar is applicable to whatever activity you're doing uh lumina you get the noble rounds and then you can buff your teammates but it's just like it can't do damage I mean, yes, it can buff your damage and buff your opponent's, uh, not your opponent's, your ally's damage. But most of the time, people have things like, we have the current artifact mods. Um, we have the Breach and Clear, which allows us to do bonus damage. We have things like Divinity. We have things like Wells and Ward of Dawn that allow us to do bonus damage that pretty much outclass the damage that uh, bonus we get from Lumina. It's like, why sacrifice an entire gun slot and an entire exotic slot for a damage buff, buffing capability that Lumina offers when you can just use an ability, like an empowering um, rift as a warlock? So, uh, yeah, uh, Lumina is a big yikes right now. Uh, it's definitely a cool gun, but in the current meta, it is not good. It definitely needs some help. The next exotic we'll be looking at is Sunshot. Sunshot still is a pretty good exotic, especially for ad clear. Um, we have Energy Accelerant as an artifact mod this season, which makes the explosions of Sunshot do a lot more damage. You could also pair uh, Wrath of Rasputin with Sunshot so that Sunshot can create War Mind cells with its explosions. However, 
the explosions that you're able to create, you're probably not going to be able to do that in higher tier content where everything is pretty much a bullet sponge. Sunshot's probably not going to be doing enough damage for you and content like this. However, in like a normal mode raid, not like master, has potential to do some good ad clear. But I'm not so sure you really want to be sacrificing your exotic slot for a hand cannon in this current meta. Um, I know rocket, legendary rockets are good in this meta and certain fusion rifles can be good. And GLs are sort of okay, but I would say the meta currently leans towards legendary rocket launchers. I just don't know if taking Sunshot is a very good idea in the current meta especially when there are so many better exotics from this list. Um, even like you're telling me in the energy slot, you would take Sunshot over Cloud Strike, or you would take, would you take Sunshot over Borealis? Maybe I could give you that, but I don't know. Like I'm definitely not taking Sunshot over Cloud Strike but I would definitely take Sunshot over Lumina or Malfeasance. Uh, I can tell you that. So Sunshot is D tier for me. Next up we have Sturm. Sturm is just useless. Um, I know you can overcharge the shots, but that requires you to go double primaries and double primaries in strikes and in patrol very good because you can survive using whatever you want in these modes however in a raid you're using a hand cannon and a sidearm in a raid uh a hand cannon and a sidearm in a raid is probably not going to keep you alive unless you know what you're doing or if you're hiding a lot and spamming your abilities sturm is not a good pick in raids it's definitely not a good pick in nightfalls or hard mode activities uh it's just, it's more of a PvP geared exotic than it really is a PvE exotic in the current meta. So uh, F tier for me, that's for sure. I, I Like if there was a tier lower than F tier, I I put Sturm in that there. Cause I'm definitely taking Lumina over Sturm. I can tell you that. Uh, next up we have, we have last word, yeah. F tier. Uh, we all know that this was made for PvP. I'm not going to get too in, uh, too into it. Um, last word, it was made for PvP, not for PvE. Uh, I'm sure in patrol it can probably be fun, but if you're taking this into a raid, you're just freaking crazy. Like, I have never seen anyone use this in a raid. Never seen anyone use this in, in any of the nightfalls I played or hard mode activities. Like in... Um, like I wouldn't bring this into expunge. Maybe if I'm memeing or something, because I have a rocket launcher to back it up. But this, it's just not meant to be used in PVE. Uh, the next exotic hand cannon we have is Thorn. Thorn. Thorn's oh, uh, it's I don't know. Thorn is okay. Um. I'd say it's a little bit better than Ace. Well, I don't know. I feel like actually saying that is pretty controversial because Thorn, you get a damage bonus when you pick up the Soul Devour. And it can be good if you're using something that, like Necrotic Grips as a Warlock. However, not everyone is a Warlock and not everyone has Necrotic Grips. So not everyone has access to a build like this. So obviously I'm not tearing it like that. Um, I mean, with overload hand cannon, yeah, the poison can stun, but it's like, why? It's like I can just stun with a regular legendary hand cannon and then have like an exotic heavy, like Anarchy or like Deathbringer to do the, the work I need an exotic to do for me. And patrol, I think it can be fun, and in strikes, it can definitely be fun, but 
it's it's not a great exotic it's not in a good place right now i think if it had a catalyst and whatever that catalyst would be to give it i think maybe it might be a little bit better but in its current state it's not great and because of just what is offered from thorn i'm gonna have to put ace above it because what ace offers you just all the combined perks of ace is just way more than what thorn can offer you and any of these other low um, exotics and the last exotic hand cannon i believe here is hawk moon let me let me just double check real quick here Yep, it looks like Hawkmoon. So Hawkmoon is the last hand cannon. And I'd say Hawkmoon right now is probably B tier. Uh, well, to be honest, I might take Hawkmoon over Whisper just because of Hawkmoon's potential. Um, I'd say Hawkmoon's probably like an A minus though, and Whisper is more sitting at like an A. Uh, Hawkmoon, especially if the catalyst and you're proccing the paracausal shots, you're able to do a lot of damage on that final crit. Whereas Whisper is doing its constant best damage whenever. However, this is a primary ammo weapon where this is a heavy ammo weapon. And when you have paracausal like times eight stacks, uh, while well, a primary weapon is now doing more damage than a heavy weapon. And you can combo Hawkmoon with a heavy weapon. So Hawkmoon definitely has the potential there. Uh, in in-game content like raids, maybe I can see use in some raids. Uh, you're definitely, you're probably not using it for boss damage though. You're probably helping, you're probably using it to help you with ad clear and just to nuke majors. Uh, in Nightfalls, I haven't seen a lot of use from Hawkmoon in Nightfalls. So I'm probably going to have to give it that B tier. Um, it definitely, it fills a slot for sure. It's definitely better than Crimson for sure. And it's better than Cloud Strike just because of the primary ammo potential. Uh, and just how easily it is to abuse and uh, use the Paracausal. Uh, this thing has way more ammo than Cloud Strike, that's for sure. So you're definitely proccing the final Paracausal shot more often than not than you are proccing the lightning strikes from cloud strike um i'd say the damage output it does is slightly more useful than something that just heals you and has quote unquote infinite ammo uh but it's hard to say if i would take Hawkmoon over whisper uh right now in this meta so i think that covers the hand cannons so let's get into scout rifles so for scout rifles, first up we have is Dead Man's Tail, and Dead Man's just gonna be A tier for me. I know there's a lot of people telling me, oh, with Vorpal and with like anti barrier, it can be S tier. But if you've actually used Dead Man's Tail and Master modes, if you're under level, if you're at level, Master is very easy, especially um, if you're messing around with guns like Dead Man's Tail with Vorpal. Um, but if you've actually used Dead Man's Tail while under leveled and with like artifact mods like anti barrier, for say everyone's saying that is, is very nice, it's just single target damage, yes, is good. But when you need your primary to also help you with general ad clear, Dead Man's Tail is not, it's just not doing it. It's got a relatively slow reload. Uh, and while you're doing certain modes like GM content and uh, master content, you have to sacrifice your loader mods for the uh, anti-barrier or overload or unstoppable mods. So you're forgoing the reload mods. So it suffers a little in the reload department, in my opinion. Uh, you're not getting any use really out of the hip fire mode. That's not really helping you that much. Um, against harder enemies i know yes your damage ramps up if you're hitting the crits it's just that it's just that it's not that great of a weapon um i mean if you get vorpal it is very good for sure it definitely vorpal keeps it in the a tier for me 
but it's like you're seriously telling me that this deserves to be an S tier. You're seriously telling me that the damage output and the flexibility of this weapon um, that is offered is sim something similar to Izanagi's. It's similar to the damage and flexibility of Ariana's. You're telling me you would use Dead Man's Tail over something like Anarchy in, in the S tier slots or something like Divinity or Deathbringer even. It's just... It's... I'm sorry, it's just, it's A tier for me. Really, I feel like almost putting an A in A tier right now is pushing it a little bit. It really should probably be like a B tier or B plus. But to, I guess, appease the masses here, uh, I will just be keeping it in A tier just like last time. Uh, the next scout rifle we have here is... Yeah, technically Graviton, but Graviton's a pulse rifle. We have Mida Multi-Tool, F tier. I'm sorry. Mida is just, it's meant for PvP again. It's like Last Word or Sturm. It's meant for PvP. Um, oh boy, you get to have your radar up while ads Who cares? Your radar is disabled in like half the end game content and most content in this game anyways because of modifiers like... Uh, blackout and i i believe it's chafe chaff whatever however you want to pronounce it your radar gets disabled from that modifier as well so you're not really benefiting from the radar uh it's got no distractions on it but who cares and that's pretty much it that that's offered from it yeah you could use mini tool to buff your movement speed but who cares about movement speed in most forms of content even in patrol or in normal mode strikes who cares if your movement speed is buffed well you're handicapping yourself by using double primaries now so uh yeah f tier for me the next scout rifle here we have is polaris polaris i actually used quite recently i was using it in master mode uh nightfalls i was not able to use it in gms i just don't think it can do the damage needed in gms however it was quite nice uh in the master uh, nightfall especially when i pretty much don't have to stop shooting when i'm critting all the time uh with it making infinite ammo and if you didn't realize um i know i'm not factoring this in but if you are using anti-barrier scout and you proc the perfect fifth the explosion created from that uh, fifth shot actually does affect the anti-barrier and can pop shields or help you pop anti-barrier shields a little bit uh quicklier or more quickly um so it does have that benefit however in its slot i don't know if i can say I would say Polaris might be on, on, on the bar of, uh, or on par with Cloud Strike. Um, I know there it's a special. We're comparing a special to a primary ammo user here, but the fact that this thing has infinite ammo, uh, it makes explosions. You can use um, Wrath of Rasputin to make War Mind cells with it. It's a reliable scout, that's for sure. Uh, it definitely. I wouldn't say it's as good as De Dead Man's Tail, especially since Dead Man's Tail, the crit ramps up the damage and the fact that you can get Vorpal on Dead Man's Tail, um, I wouldn't say is it's as good as DMT. Um, but I wouldn't say Polaris is on par with Ace. It's definitely better than Ace. It's definitely better than Sunshot. Um, it's not... It's not F tier, it's not D tier, but it's hard to say it's on the same level as Hawkmoon or as a, as DMT. Uh, I feel like CloudTrek now is kind of in a weird place sitting at C, but with the tests I've done with CloudStrike, it's really hard to give CloudStrike a harder, um, a higher position than C tier right now. So that's Polaris, C tier. Uh, the next scout rifle we have is... Oh, everyone's 
once favorite PvP scout rifle, Symmetry. At the time when Symmetry came out in PvP, everyone thought it was going to be incredibly OP, but that is not the case anymore. Um, Symmetry, it's not good. Um, the revolution shots, yes, can do a lot of damage, but it's just, it doesn't do enough damage. Like, even in, and this is, I'm talking about even, like, against, like, majors and strikes, it just doesn't do enough damage. It's, like, that's how bad it is. Like, if you were looking at the guns in F tier, like, these are the guns that suck even in patrol and strikes where everything nukes. Like, that's how you know these guns deserve to be down there. Um, so yeah, I, I don't need to go into depth. If it sucks in patrol and strikes, like symmetry, it's F tier. Next we have... Oh, where is it? Yep, there it is. Jade Rabbit. Jade, F tier. And while yes, Jade might do a little better than symmetry in patrol and strikes, the fact that the whole point of this gun is to hit body shots to make your headshots do more damage is stupid because the whole point of playing this game is to hit the headshots in the first place. People are used to going after the head to do the most damage. Why are you using exotic that forces you to hit body shots to decrease your damage just so you can make one shot or two shots do extra headshot damage? No one cares. Um, Jade is, it's meant for PvP, but even in PvP, you're not going for body shots, you're going for headshots, so it's like, it's like below F tier, it's like trash tier, really. And then I believe that is the last scout rifle, so let's just double check here on our scout rifles. Oh, missed it. We have Skyburner's er, Oath. Excuse me, Sky Skyburner's Oath. F tier. Um, yes, I know you can shoot through like Cabal shields, and it, it has. I think you. I don't know. You, I don't think you do more damage to Cabal. It just shoots through Phalanx shields, uh, and it tracks technically, and it has new damage fall off because it does explosive damage. Uh, but it shoots so damn slow. It just does not do enough damage, even in patrol and in strikes. It is literally a waste of a slot. It's like on par with symmetry. It's just, you're wasting your time using a gun like this. It was probably a cool idea when it came out, but like now in, in our current meta, it, it doesn't live up to what it needs to do for you. It doesn't kill ads fast enough. Like it sucks at ad clear. Like, you're going to waste your entire exotic slot for an exotic that can't even do general ad clear for you in strikes or normal level patrols. Like, if this is sucking, again, if something like this is sucking in patrol and normal mode strikes, it's definitely sucking in things like endgame content like raids or in Nightfall's master GM content hard mode. Uh, compar uh, comparing this to other exotics in its slot, yeah, I'm definitely taking Borealis over this thing. I'm definitely taking Cloud Strike over Skyburners. Uh, I'm definitely taking Arianas over Skyburners. So yeah, F tier. And I think that was the last one. I don't think I missed any others. Um, yep, that's it for the Scout Rifles. So next up, we're going to go into fusion rifles and in terms of fusion rifles i'm covering linear fusion rifles um our trace rifles as well and of course fusion rifles um like the actual charge up fusion so all anything you know fusion linear fusion uh, trace rifles they're all being included in this section so first up we have mythoclast mythoclast very 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 underwhelming um i know i know when it first came out in d1 it was very good but then i've read i've actually read about mythoclast and after it got nerfed it was just kind of like middle of the pack 
kind of like below middle of the pack really no one really no one used it as much um in d2 it's kind of like that it's it's sucky it's cool but it just doesn't do enough damage to red bars um sure it's cool that it technically can transform itself into a linear fusion rifle but that linear fusion rifle damage sucks like i've used this thing in gambit because i wanted to see how good it would be against like majors and it just sucks against majors you can't even one shot majors or do any significant amount of damage to majors in gambit um I know I'm not using Gambit as a metric for a lot of these weapons, but if Mythoclass is struggling to kill majors in its linear fusion form, that does not bode well to how it can perform in things like raids, nightfalls, or hard mode activities, like scale difficulty activities. If you're at level, under level, um, it's okay in general ad clear like if you're in patrol or in strikes it can definitely do its job um because it's like an auto rifle but it's a fusion technically it's just it's not good um i don't have the catalyst for it yet but really what i've seen is the catalyst doesn't really do anything to make it any better yeah you can make orbs now with the catalyst but who cares when it's already struggled to kill red bars in the first place with this thing so i'm gonna have to put it at d tier i don't know though if i would take mythoclass over something like in the same slot like sunshot i would probably take sunshot over mythoclass so i'd say mythoclass is more like a d minus and like sunshot's like a d plus or something um if anything to differentiate them next up we have Arbalest. Arbalest, even with the that buff it received to um, the damage it does to shielded opponents, it just is not... It's not good. Um, it's a sniper rifle with a charge time and a red dot, so it's cool, but it's just... It's very lackluster, especially in the damage department, and I have not seen anyone use this on PC for the last couple of months. Uh, in this season and in the previous season and i'm talking about like even the random teammates i match make with like no one uses arbalest at all it's just it's completely useless um yeah it's just completely useless like yeah you can pierce shields but like you're probably only piercing those shields in like lower end you know areas of content and even then it's like just break the shield with your energy weapon and do like that bonus damage especially if you're matching that element so if there's like an arc shield captain just use your Ikelos smg and break the shield do bonus damage and just kill him with the primary why are you wasting your special ammo um on this red bar with a shield um you're using arbalist oh arbalist can pierce the shield well who cares um just shoot it normally uh a lot of people say that maybe giving it like anti-barrier piercing would make it better but that's really a, just a band-aid fix um even even in uh even if it had anti-barrier i can't say i would even consider using this weapon to help me do uh anti-barrier damage it's just it's not good it, even with the lfr buff it's not good um and no one uses it and that rightfully so f tier next fusion we have is bastion yes bastion received the unstoppable rounds now however how many times can you tell me that you've realistically used bastion to stun an unstoppable champion uh if that's you then i applaud you if you're able to do that but i'm not doing it the people I LFG for Nightfalls aren't doing something like that. Uh, it definitely does a ton of damage for sure. The Bastion shots do a ton of damage and it can be used to kill lots of majors and it, it probably has uses in content like the Nightfalls uh, and in hard mode activities. 
Um, but I wouldn't say it's something I would take over Dead Man's Tale uh, in the same category or something over like Izanagi's. I would say I would take it over Cloud Strike or I would take it over Crimson just because it's just the damage potential from Bastion is way better uh, than, than Cloud Strike, especially since you can use um, Bastion in Crypt Security to pretty much just one one shot the tubes when they pop up. I'm pretty sure Cloud Strike can't do that. Uh, so I would say Bastion is a B tier for me. Um, just because of its damage output uh, that it brings to the table. Let's see, the next fusion we have is a trace rifle, I know. Not a fusion, but I'm including it in the fusion area, is Cold Heart. Yes, recently we got the trace rifle scavenger mods, but even considering that, is Cold Heart it's not it's not good anymore definitely when cold heart came out it was it was good and it was used for like boss damage for sure because of the scaling damage it d does but the thing is now bosses have much more health uh cold heart like yes if everyone's using it and you have builds that build into cold heart and you have things like i don't know in the future like oppressive darkness or be a breaching clear like yeah you can get cold heart to do more damage but it's just you need those mods to make it do more damage and like especially for like s for single target sustained damage it's definitely doing a lot but for things like ad clear it's like ugh, it's just not a good ad clear device um especially like you know the whole point of it is that the damage scales over time when it and when an ad or a major isn't dying if you're using this on red bars it's such a waste on majors maybe you're getting a little more out of it and then bosses for sure you're getting the most out of it but it's just trace rifles are just a really really like underwhelming niche kind of like weapon choice at least cold heart and prometheus and wave splitter are uh however i wouldn't say cold heart is definitely not as useless as the last word and definitely has more uses than lumina uh and probably has a little bit more use than mythoclast so i would say but it's really hard saying cold heart is has the same usage as polaris or has the same uses as Cloud Strike, so I, I'm gonna put its D tier for me for uh, Cold Heart. Next, we have Divinity. Divinity, I know a little biased, but it's still S tier. Used this recently, and the GM of this week, even though there are no overloads, it's just combined with something like Izanagi's, or combined really with anything uh, that makes any weapon do bonus damage, and the fact that the cage itself will do bonus damage. Uh, it's just such a good, reliable exotic to have. As and especially with when you're trying to stun overloads, it's very reliable in stunning overload champions. It's... What more do I need to say? It's a very, very good exotic. It's still used by speedrunners um, for nightfall activities. Um, if you've seen like, speedruns of Proving Ground, Divinity is used. Uh, excuse me, it's still used for Tanix, for doing damage to Tanix. Uh, I don't know if it's used for Atheon. Uh, might be used for Atheon, doing damage to Atheon. Uh, definitely not for Riven, obviously. And I'm not sure about uh, Sanctified Mind for uh, Garden of Salvation. But it turns every crit spot into a huge, easy to hit crit spot for your teammates. Definitely excels and uh six man or three man activities however as a solo thing for ad clear obviously it's not going to be very good for ad clear um however for usage metrics i still see a lot of people use this uh it's definitely still a very valuable exotic so s tier next we have jotun uh jotun 
I'd say is a pretty damn good exotic still. Um, the fact that it it's it's just easy to use. It tracks or has light tracking towards targets, um, depending on how you see that tracking. I'd say it's like light tracking. Um, it nukes majors, like it absolutely nukes majors. I wouldn't say it's something I would take into things like nightfalls, like master or or if I'm at level for master, um, I'm three forty uh, two currently in this season. Uh, sorry, thirteen. 42 in this season uh masters are 1340 if i'm at level and i'm using you in, in a master it's like whatever but if i'm under level if i'm like taking it into a gm like it's not doing the work that i need it to do so i definitely wouldn't be taking this into like under level content uh in raids it's it's good in raids i used to use Yoten in uh crown of sorrow when crown of sorrow was still a raid that was around uh it's pretty good to add clear um, the ex the uh, explosion can cause burn um, to adds. Uh, I think you can use it with sunspots on titans. So uh, it's pretty solid exotic. And I would say I probably take this over Cloud Strike just because it's a little easier to use than Cloud Strike. You don't have to do anything fancy like hitting crits or anything like that. Um, I don't know if it's doing as much damage as Cloud Strike, so you you might have me on that. So, and it's hard to say if I would take Jotun over Hawkmoon or not, but probably like a probably like a C tier or like a low B tier Jotun. Um, this one's it's difficult. I feel like I'm using Cloud Strike a lot here as a. Uh, uh, metric here but it's since it's sitting in c tier like if it's better than the c tier it better be better than like the best c tier item here um and like if it's worse than the c tier here it's probably worse than crimson um but it's not worse than crimson that's for sure but and it's definitely better than crimson so this would probably be like c plus and this is like a c minus really um but I don't know. I might move Cloud Strike to B tier just because of the damage potential. But the fact that a legendary weapon can pretty much out damage Cloud Strike, it's really hard to give Cloud Strike that B tier. Um, and I can't say a lot of weapon legendary fusions or you know other energy weapons in this slot can out damage. Uh, Jotun and the potential Jotun gives to you. Um, so I'm going to put Jotun at B tier. The next fusion rifle we have is Merciless. Merciless is bugged again. I think the kill clip that it has, or when you reload and you do bonus damage, doesn't actually do bonus damage, but the, the rapid fire part of it still uh works now um not still works it now works i think in this season it got fixed merciless is um, it's definitely not as good as Jotun, just because like you need that rapid fire to proc up but it's like you're wasting it's like a poor man's i don't know it's like the poor man's cold heart really because you're like you're wasting so much more ammo than cold heart to actually do like do uh i don't know if that even makes sense what i'm trying to say it's just i don't know i definitely can't say it's something i would take over cloud strike or take in the slot of cloud strike um i'd say i I'd probably take, yeah, it's probably D tier. It's not completely useless, but it's not on par with something like Cloud Strike, for sure, or on par with something like Polaris. Like, I would rather take Polaris over Merciless, because at least Polaris, you know, has the perfect fifth shot and, like, has the infinite ammo um, and has, you know, the safety of the range and has good ad clear. 
Um, Merciless, it has good ad clear, but like you're probably not going to be using it for ad clear just because of how the perk works, where you're able to just keep shooting rapidly against targets until they die. You're probably going to try to use it on bosses, but fusion rifle damage on bosses, it's like just use like a sniper rifle um, that's safer, you know, because the damage fall off for fusion rifles is quite extreme or you know it's not extreme but it's like it's significant to the point where i would use a legendary sniper rifle over merciless i'd probably use borealis service uh merciless but yeah d tier for me for merciless the next fusion rifle we have here is 1000 voices 1000 voices i'd say is still probably it's still probably up there. I wouldn't say it's S tier anymore just because of the options available. I will say it is A tier. Um, I would probably take uh, 1000 Voices over Whisper, and I definitely would take 1000 Voices over Dead Man's Tail just because of the damage potential of 1K Voices and its ease of use and its ad clear potential. It's a point and click adventure. You play MS Paint and it destroys everything that you've swipe your mouse around while using 1k as far as its slot goes um and its type definitely the best fusion of all the um like damage fusions here um definitely i wouldn't say it's as good as divinity what divinity offers as an exotic uh to your team however you're definitely doing more damage than hawk moon uh you're definitely doing it's definitely slightly better than Whisper, as I've said. Definitely better than... There's not a lot of other heavy exotics here currently on the tier list. Um, I wouldn't say it's as good as Izanagi's for sure, or as good as um, Ariana's Vow. Um, but, you know, it's definitely up there, so A tier. Uh, the next fusion we have is Prometheus Lens. It's a trace rifle, so but technically fusion, as I'm counting. And I'd say Prometheus is above Cold Heart. Uh, the reason I'd say it's above Cold Heart, or, but I wouldn't say Prometheus is on par with Polaris or Cloud Strike. It's it's more of like a D plus and uh, Cold Heart's like a D. The reason being is that like at least Prometheus can auto load, whereas Cold Heart, you know, it can't do that. So at least with Prometheus, you can keep shooting forever when you're getting kills and that bubble keeps getting bigger and bigger. And definitely it's good for general ad clear, especially in patrols and strikes, but in things like a raid, or like a nightfall or like hard mode content like with difficulty scaling while being like even at level or under level like i can't say i'm taking prometheus into this content i can't say i've seen people use prometheus in this content maybe new players who just got the exotic are using it but i can't say that i've seen like anyone use um this exotic especially even with like the trace ruffle mods we've gotten it's uh yeah i don't see people using them uh, next up we have is we have sleeper sleeper yes got the recent buff and the recent patch however i have used it in grandmaster content and i have used it uh in raids and it sucks in gms i'll just tell you that even with the buff it actually sucks in any content uh where you're trying to use that ricochet on your bo on bosses because the default damage it does to bosses the ricochet damage is 400 damage so yeah that sucks now um if you're just hitting the head it does a ton of damage especially it's good in gms and like master if you have people critting the target and like stunning not critting sorry stunning the target so someone stuns the overload champion for you and you're able to get your um you're ready with your sleeper then you can definitely do a lot of damage to it to the champion however 
like you have to have someone actively stunning the champion for you especially if it's an overload otherwise it just it sucks um it doesn't do enough damage uh especially with its reserves it has only 11 shots um uh that's base if you don't have any bonus reserves and this is with catalyst the fact that it only has 11 shots and just does very lackluster damage especially since your ricochet damage isn't that great uh it's not very good it sucks uh you're probably not using this for ad clear it definitely i mean it can nuke red bars yeah but at what cost all of your freaking ammo so um in its slot i'd say it's it's not better than any of these heavy weapons but i would say i just take it over any of these f tier weapons because at least it gives you some semblance of heavy damage it's just even with the buff sleeper like it's very hard like putting it in this category i'm comparing it to these weapons here um i just take cod strike over sleeper because like at least i get ammo with sleeper and at least i know i'm doing some somewhat reliable damage and it has somewhat of ad clear potential and major damage potential yeah the healing the heal this has got the healing from it which is nice uh and the infinite ammo again infinite ammo and lot, lots of good ad clear same with this good ad clear this like uh i mean i get it's definitely better than ag uh than crimson and the damage department but it's like uh it's a he you're comparing a heavy here to a primary and a heavy to a special I don't know. I think Sleeper is like D tier. It, it's definitely better than most of these exotics here for sure. So it's like, you know, I can't. There you go. It's it's the king of the D tiers. But giving it S, like C tier is very hard. As, even with the buff it got, it's just, it's not good. It, LFRs just are in a weird position in this game. The next fusion rifle we have is everyone's favorite. Telesto. Telesto, still very good. Good for ad clear, general ad clear in patrol and strikes. Good for ad clear in raids and nightfalls. Um, don't know how often you're going to be using this in master nightfalls or in grandmaster content. In hard mode activities, still does is very well. If you bring this into like expunge uh, or in override, very it's a very good exotic. It does a lot of damage. It does the crystals explode. Very fun, easy to use. Has a lot of ammo, especially if you have the catalyst. Um, seven shots in the mag. Pretty good charge time. I take this over. I probably take this over all the D tier. Um, I would say it's like on par with Cloud Strike. I wouldn't say I would say it's probably on par with uh Jotun. i feel like they offer similar kind of like damage and like ad clear potential and just like use potential um i it's it's tricky i really feel like now cloud strike should be c tier but i'm right now we'll leave it in c tier we'll get to that uh if we need to make an addendum later on but uh, in terms of fusion rifles, next up we have Queensbreaker. Queensbreaker brought this into um, a GM. It sucked in the GM. Uh, in endgame content, I definitely can tell you this is not it, uh, even for boss damage. Uh, maybe if you're at level, it can, it can be good for sure. I used it in patrol and it nukes Lost Sector bosses. It does a ton of damage. It does more damage than Whisper, I think. Uh, it does more damage than Cloud Strike in patrols. However, most, again, most of the content you guys are consuming in this game are is content that isn't spent while in patrol or while in normal strikes. You're gonna be engaging in the seasonal content that scales with difficult, um, scales with your power level. You're gonna be engaging in the ordeals and Queensbreaker really isn't it. Um, I, but, you know, 
it's got it's like the on par damage with cloud strike so i would say queen's breaker is c tier uh, especially if you're using the high damage mode if you're using the low damage mode the low damage scope then it's like d or f tier uh, so make sure you're using the high damage scope next up we have in terms of the fusion family wave splitter wave splitter uh f tier i'm not i really feel like i don't have to get into that it's just the crappier version of these two it's the crappier version of cold heart really um like yeah if you pick up an orb it does more damage but you know you have to use another weapon in order to get the most out of this weapon and you should just be using this weapon to get the most out of this weapon uh and just like at least cold heart ramps up in damage if you're not killing and at least this one auto reloads this is just like can you really honestly tell me the last person you've seen use wave splitter yeah so uh f tier next fusion we got is well the last one i believe is ruinous effigy ruinous effigy uh born born too late i or born mm, i mean it was born you know good like it was very fun to use and like when it first came out it was great but then it got nerfed and like its potential just withered away um like with energy accelerant it's good but energy accelerant it's not going to be available in the game forever so ruinous effigy this one it's this one is just it sucks where it's at and because it sucks where it's at like i don't know i i think it might be c tier really but like even i haven't used this in a while like i i did experiment with energy accelerant but like this tier list isn't looking at artifact mods and like it's good for general ag clear like in, it can help with general ag clear but like in its slot like i'm taking cloud strike any day of the week over ruinous effigy you know I, I probably i take polaris lance over this damn thing um in the d tier area man it, i definitely would take ruinous over sunshot and maybe maybe over mythoclass just because of the potential but yeah it's, it's not c tier it's d tier I, I know i know a lot of people really want this to be higher up but with the damage it does and the damage of the orbs right now it's just it's not uh it's not in a good place at least you know trace rifles i don't think are in a good place right now obviously showed by this uh tier list here and in terms of fusions or the trace rifles i think that's it just double check here make sure i covered everything All right, it looks like that's it. So next up, we're gonna talk about pulse rifles. First up, we have bad juju. Bad juju in raids. It's it's, it's okay. Uh, nightfalls like lower tier nightfalls. Maybe I use it. Hard mode activities. It, it has potential in hard mode activities. Um, under level definitely wouldn't recommend it. At level would more so recommend it in terms of ad clear pretty good for ad clear especially you know you get your super back really fast if you're killing those red bars not that great for majors definitely you're not going to be using it against bosses obviously um usage metrics really can't say i've seen anyone use bad juju outside of like easy mode strikes um and the like uh I, it's hard to say if it's C tier, really. Well, you know, I'd probably take it over Ace, to be honestly honest, just because 
if you have curse of strings procced you know you get that bonus damage if you're getting kills it refills the mag like crimson generates infinite ammo technically as well you get super off of the kills so there's that uh you can generate fast supers so yeah i'd say bad to use like a c tier right now next pulse rifle we have is graviton lance graviton is the worst version of sunshot um i just sunshot's just easier to use than graviton graviton just even though it shoots faster, it just feels slower. It feels worse. The, the zoom. Um, for me, I mean, like, if you're able to get the explosion off where it chains, then it has potential to be very good. But it's like a pulse rifle that acts like it's a scout rifle um, that just doesn't do enough damage most of the time. And I feel like getting it to crit a lot like it just doesn't want to crit sometimes because of the second shot just how it, the recoil bounces i can't on usage metrics i don't see a lot of people using this anymore uh even in pvp uh, maybe like if they're memeing in pvp but i just uh it's uh it's not there for sure it's definitely not f tier uh it's like the poor man's well, I mean, I wouldn't even say it's the poor man's sunshot. It, they're really the same. They're really interchangeable, sunshot and graviton, but it's not C tier, I can tell you that. It's not on par with something like Cloud Strike. Um, but Sleeper, I would say, is better than it, for sure. I, so, like, Runus, we'll bring Runus up here. So, next up in the Pulse Rifle department, we have... Outbreak. Outbreak, I'd still say, is pretty solid. Um, in terms of its ranking, I wouldn't say it's A tier. Uh, well, I don't know. Especially because of how the nanites work and how they do damage over time. And if you're doing sustained damage, you're doing a lot of nanite damage. Uh, it's really easy to use. It shoots like a laser. Uh, it's easy ad clear as well. Um, would I take this over Hawkmoon? That's the real question. Would I take this over Bastion? I probably take it over Bastion just because it's primary and it's just has a little more like you know usage. Uh, don't know if I would take it over Hawkmoon necessarily. I would say it's more on po on par with the B tiers here. I wouldn't say as it's as good as it once was. Uh, I would probably take this over Crimson, over Bad Juju. It's do it's definitely doing more damage than Bad Juju. Uh, can't say if it's doing more damage than Cloud Strike, but again, I could just take a legendary sniper rifle in my energy slot and outbreak. Uh, and yeah, that legendary sniper rifle is doing more damage than Cloud Strike. So uh, yeah, a B tier for me for outbreak next pulse rifle we got here is there's not a lot of pulse rifles we have vidwing vidwing while you could argue hat is underrated um i wouldn't say it's completely useless it's reliable it shoots fast uh it's easy to use it's good in patrol and in strikes for ag clear um I, I can't say I've seen people use this in raids, nightfalls, really, hard mode activities of the like. Uh, but it's not completely useless. But its perks, like, they don't work unless your fire team members are dead. And in most modes, your fire team members aren't dying a lot. And especially in endgame content where you're trying to stay alive, like, you're not never really going to truly benefit off of the perks that wing offers you um, not like how you can benefit from it while playing pvp so i think last time i said it was f but now that the bar for f tier is just being completely useless in uh patrol and in strikes i wouldn't say it's completely useless in those modes next up we have i believe it's no time to explain the last pulse rifle so no time 
Uh, probably C. It's makes infinite ammo. Uh, if you're critting, you get that little uh, arc buddy, quote unquote. It's not arc buddy. It's your um, the ghost buddy that shoots for you. Uh, it's you get infinite ammo as long as you're hitting the crits. It's full auto. It's easy to use. It shoots like a laser. However, this does bonus damage over time and gives you super. Uh, I would say it's better than Vigwing just because of that little ghost buddy you get um, that shoots for you. However, it's and, and like it can be good for ad clear, but it's just not. It's not a great option. Um, it's just D tier. Like I feel like how it performs in end game content pretty self explanatory. How it performs in its slot. Uh, definitely taking bad juju over it, outbreak over it, Izanagi's over it. Uh, in terms of other pulse rifles, it's like on par with Vigwing. It's probably slightly better than Vig Vigwing because you can at least get more use out of the perks than you can with Vigwing. So uh, D tier. And I think in terms of pulse rifles, that's pretty much it. So let's just look at it here. Just double check, make sure I hit all the pulse rifles. So I believe that is it. So the next exotic category we're going to be looking at is, let's look at the bows. They've been sitting here. So the bows, we have Taiku's Divination. And the last tier list, I gave it S tier, but that was because I was looking at artifact mods at the time. However, usage metrics, it's not used as much. However, Taiku still does like decent amount of damage, especially if you're proccing um, the Sacred Flame Stacks or whatever they're called. Uh, you fire off, and I thought this was funny, is in the comments of the last video, there's someone who didn't understand how to use Taikus. The way you use Taikus is you hit fire and it targets the enemies for you and it attaches like a flame arrow to them and they're doing burn damage. If you ADS and you shoot your shot at these uh, targets, they'll explode. Um, that's just how the perk works. So you spam the uh, the right click, the hip fire, and then you ADS and the you do like bonus explosion damage to the targets. Um, and that person kept trying to say, "Oh, you know, it sucks. It sucks. Um, it doesn't suck. Uh, it actually does a lot of damage. It's very good ad clear." Uh, has potential in raids uh has higher potential especially when we have overload bows again or like i don't know anti-barrier bows or something like that uh it's not really a something i would bring into a raid though or a nightfall unless it's got the artifact mod for the nightfall and hard mode activities yeah maybe it can help you with some uh deleting majors and the like uh, in terms of metrics, I can't say I've seen a lot of people use this bow at all, uh, but I would say it, it ha it's up there. It's not D tier. It has more potential over these exotics, um, but I wouldn't say it's as good. Like I wouldn't use it over Telesto or or like Jotun or something. So it it's, deserves to be in the C tier. The next bow we have is. Uh, the Monarch. The Monarch is... Uh, the Poison is good, but it's a really lackluster bow. Um, I, I think it needs a Catalyst, but what the Catalyst would add to the bow, I'm not sure. Um, it just needs some more, like, oomph, like more damage or something. Uh, it's good for, you know, ad clear and patrol and then strikes and like sometimes dealing with majors, but it's just, it's not, it's definitely not better than Taikus or on par with Taikus right now. Um, you know, it's not on par with Polaris as an, you know, in terms of slot, you know, I take this over this because at least this can like, has the potential to heal me. Like this just, this below is bottom of C. Like, at least this can heal, heal me and have infinite ammo, you know. 
Uh, and this kind of just is like, you know, it can do the poison damage for like ad clear and the splash damage, but like that's really it from Monarch. So D tier for me. Next we have Leviathan's Breath. I actually used this, um, had um, my clan founder, he used this in uh, Master Mode when we played, and he said when a champion was stunned, like if I stunned the champion for him and he used this weapon, it was doing like 50k per, per hit. So like it does, it can do work when you're at level. However, when you're under level, this thing sucks uh, a lot. Uh, it just doesn't do enough damage. So I think it has potential in raids, but like I don't think unless you have the catalyst for this thing, and if you're running like reserves, it has potential because you have enough ammo to do to do a lot of damage. However, the draw time is a, a serious um, drawback to its potential because you can't you have to draw the bat the bow up. It it's got a long dr draw time, and then you can't hold it forever. You eventually have to shoot. Um, so it's slow in terms of its DPS. But it does do damage if you're at level. However, in terms of its slot, uh, I would say yeah, it's like on par with Queensbreaker. So I'd say like it, so I'd say like C tier. In terms of other bows, um, I would say it's probably slightly better than Taiku's. Honestly, uh, for sure it's better than the Monarch. Uh, but yeah. Next up, we have Trinity School. Trinity, uh, wouldn't say it's S tier currently, uh, but it still does a ton of damage. It's very good for ad clear, very good for dealing with majors. Um, actually, seen, uh, I think Dado, Dado, if again, I'm mentioning him again, uh, he's not the basis for this tier list, obviously, but I did watch him use it in the Master, Master Vog. So, if it's able to help him in a master mode of content, then uh, it's probably doing, you know, helping him stay alive and, you know, it's good for ad clear and whatnot. Obviously, you're sacrificing your, that slot, your exotic slot, you know, for something that's not going to allow you to do the exotic damage. So, you know, it has... It's easier to use, I think, than Taiku's just because of how it works. So I, I'd say it's like C tier now. Uh, Wish Ender is the last bow. Wish Ender, yeah, it can over penetrate, but it's like it, it's better. It's not use. It's not useless. Okay, in patrol and strikes, like it can definitely add clear, but. And like it can definitely help kill majors, but like anything outside of that, you're wasting your time with this bow. Uh, and I think that covers all the bows. So next up, we're gonna go into uh, swords. Let's talk about the swords. So Black Talon is the first sword here. Black Talon, mm, Black Talon, it's good. Uh, it's good for ad clear. It's got a ton of ammo. It's good for doing damage to majors and some bosses for sure because of it being a sword um i can't say i would bring it into gm content though like under leveled probably if i'm at level i'd bring it there in hard mode content it is a, it's definitely a solid pick that's for sure however taking black talent over 1k no i don't think i can see it as s here but taking Black Talon in place of 1k, probably since Black Talon has a higher ammo capacity than 1k. Um, you can do more with Black Talon. Uh, I'd say it's probably on par with Whisper. Definitely, I would take this over taking any of these um, for sure, just of what Black Talon offers. So, A tier for me for Black Talon. Next up in the sword department, there's not a lot here. Uh, I believe there's only like three swords, right? Just want to double check. I'm not missing any swords here. We have War Worldline Zero. 
F tier. Uh, it's like, like why would you even use it for general eye clear? I mean, yes, it can be good in patrol and strikes, but it's like, who's using it? Like the whole like perk system it's got, it's just completely utter trash. It's just useless, in my opinion. So F tier. Lament, lament. I think is, I think it's A tier. I wouldn't personally. I don't believe lament is A tier. Um. Mostly because. Like yes, it heals you off of the slashes, so you are healing, and it's good against anti-barrier but in a lot of content now it's just it's not safe to use like if you're at level it's safe but if you're under level it's not safe so like i'm not bringing lament into gms for sure i can tell you that and i'm not bringing it into master vog um i've done master vog no one used Lament in Master Vog, uh, even if it does heal you to help you stay alive. Uh, S tier, I feel like is pushing it with Lament. Um, but it's still good. Like it, it can help you with certain bosses that aren't stomp heavy. So I'm conflicted about giving Lament S tier. I know I, I gave it A tier last time, and I had my reasons then, and I still have my reasons now. I'm just, it's really hard for me to give it S tier. I know it performs very well. It's a very, very good exotic. Um, but when I get into the later, later here, when we have exotics like Anarchy, like... At least in the state that Anarchy is currently at, I can't say that Lament is on the same page as something like Anarchy. Um, it's probably a little less than Anarchy. Uh, especially with the sword nerfs as well, Lament is still good, but it's not what it once was. And that's really what's keeping me from giving it that S tier, is it has to compete with other great exotic heavies and some legendaries and the fact that there's been so many sword nerfs and yes you could use lucent blade or whatever but remember i'm not talking about builds in this tier list because some people might not have lucent blade to give it that buff so it's gonna be a tier for me again sorry guys and that wraps up the swords so let's go into everyone's favorite here is grenade launchers so the first grenade launcher obviously anarchy here s tier beats out izanagi's right now come on getting in there uh what more is there to say it is the safest exotic to use for boss damage it has so much ammo capacity easy for ad clear nukes uh nukes add some patrol and nukes strike bosses it nukes raid bosses it's so great in nightfalls master gm at level under level it's great in hard mode activities it's the best in slot it's the best uh grenade launcher what more can i say like everyone recommends getting this exotic and yes it's going to get nerfed in the future so i have no idea what it's going to like be like in season 15 or season 16 but right now anarchy is still the undisputed king of all the exotics in this damn game of all the weapons in this uh game so yeah s tier anything if anything it's like op tier or like triple s tier or s plus uh, that's anarchy for you fighting lion is next fighting lion i know is a little bit harsh on it and i gave it like f tier or something uh fighting lion is just I'm going to be harsh again, and I'm going to give it D tier here. The reason being is that there are so many legendary uh, grenade launchers that can just do what Fighting Lion does better. And I know it's like, oh, but it uses primary, so you don't have to search for ammo as much. But 
I mean, ammo is not scarce in this game anyways. It's pretty easy to find special breaks in this game or to get special ammo. I can't really say I've ever constantly been out of special ammo. And like, I would rather take a legendary grenade launcher that can blind enemies than uh, fighting line. Because blinding enemies as a utility from grenade launchers is very useful in all walks of content and raids and nightfalls hard mode activities master fog i use blinding nades uh in gm content blinding nades are very great on the legendary weapons and the fact that i can get that on a legendary weapon and i can't get it on fighting lion is just like why even take fighting lion in the first place when i can just take a legendary weapon that does fighting lines job better even though it takes special over primary so for me Fighting line's gonna have to be a D tier. I'm sorry. It's just not. It's not as great as people think it is. Um, especially when I don't even see people using it in the first place. So, next up in terms of the GLs, we have Colony. Colony, uh, definitely worse than Fighting Lion. I'll, I'll give you the Fighting Lion people that uh, doesn't have a lot of use. The Insectoid robot tracking is more suited for pvp than it is for pve it's pretty easy to hit your targets in pve uh you don't really need tracking for that uh it doesn't really do any more damage than you can get off a, a well-rolled legendary grenade launcher so f tier for me um prospector use prospector today as well in uh master mode content where i'm at level i'm at 340 and it, it definitely nukes the champions, but at the cost of you using pretty much all your ammo. And the ammo economy on this thing is not like Anarchy. Uh, you're constantly out of ammo. You're constantly looking for ammo. So Prospector, um, not that great. Yes, it can deal with um, general ad clear and has good performance in patrol and in strike modes. And in content where you're at level, but if you're under level and you're using this in a raid or whatever, you're just constantly going to be out of ammo. Uh, and that's what really sucks about it. Uh, but in terms of what where I would place it, I'd say... Yeah, I'd say it's slightly better than the exotics in D tier. So I would place it in C tier. Uh, in terms of its slot... It's just better than sleeper because it has more ammo at least even if you are looking for ammo most of the time with this weapon uh you know it's just a little bit easier to use than sleeper um it's it's better than fighting line because at least it's doing the damage i need it to do and it can fill the role of fighting line for ad clear as well um but yeah, I, it's it's a C, it's like low C tier for me, like C minus really. Uh, next GL we have is just want to double check, make sure I, I'm getting everything here. The next GL we have is Salvation's Grip F tier. I'm not gonna go into that. You guys know why it's F tier. It just sucks. Um, and moving on to the last GL here, we have Wither Horde. Wither Horde, I think, is S tier. I've been using this a lot. I use this to get my solo prophecy flawless uh, this season. I use Wither Horde to help me get there. It's a very solid exotic still. Very good for ad clear. Very good for boss damage. Um, even in for some raids and as well as in the nightfalls it's pretty good if you especially if you don't have something like anarchy it's definitely like a mini anarchy if you know how to use it um i know the slow kind of sucks how the projectile speed is rather slow but if you're a good user you'll you'll know how to make up for that um for that uh slowness issue and if you have the catalyst it's got auto loading on it which makes it amazing so s tier for me and i believe that's it for the gls so moving on we're going to talk about 
auto rifles. First up, we have Kerberos. Kerberos, Cerberus, however you want to say it. Uh, it's good, like for like ad clear, but like I can't say I take Kerberos, put Kerberos in the same slot as fighting a lion. Uh, Kerberos like F tier. It, it's like a fun gun, but it's just it's not good. Um, I, I mean, it, I know the bar here is that these weapons um, can't they just suck for patrol and strikes but it's like even though it can be good in patrol it's just not like i still just can't recommend it like it's probably the top of the f tiers it's an it's an f plus next auto we have is hard light yeah hard light can switch between all the modes um i would say hard light has more use over uh cerberus Kerberos, and um uh, these other weapons or the other auto rifles excuse me um, however it's just you know it's just a it's an auto rifle with ricochet rounds and yeah it can change elements but that's really all there is to it it's like um, maybe it's good if you're solo but if you're soloing most forms of content, match game isn't on, so you're not gonna have to worry about uh, needing a certain type of energy weapon to destroy a shield. You're just gonna nuke the shields anyway. So to me, hard light's just D tier. It's just a, uh, it's just a average, it's just a, what a legendary auto rifle could be with ricochet rounds. Um, and yeah, it changes it can change between the elements, but who who cares? Really? Who cares? Next we have Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo sorry, Monte Carlo refunds your melee uh, off of kills and while you're doing damage. Uh, restores melee energy. It also technically creates infinite ammo, I believe. Um, it has the swashbuckler ability but in terms of its infinite ammo counterparts um i can't say i put monte carlo on the same page as bad juju or on the same page as crimson um auto rifles are good they're okay but it's like to me, taking Monte Carlo over Fighting Lion, uh, I don't know. I know some of the D tier exotics are just kind of in there because they just suck, um, and they don't fulfill like all the rules they need to fulfill. But like Monte Monte Carlo is like a good workhorse weapon for sure, and it like has some benefits um, to it, like getting your melee back and like doing bonus damage with the swash so I, i'd say it's like like high d tier if anything uh next we have suros suros is like d tier for me um yeah it's good in patrol and in strikes however with suros it's just uh spinning up can be good against majors because you're doing um you're outputting more bullets into your target uh, faster and faster but it's just like you have a chance to heal yourself at least crimson is a guaranteed uh chance to heal yourself where Cirrus is not Cirrus's range really hurts it as well um and dual receiver is not that great i really and the fact that you have to open up your inventory to switch between dual receiver and spinning up that's just that's not good um it this thing needs to be reworked um it's it's d tier or yeah, i feel like d tier is really pushing it with cirrus if anything i feel like cirrus is like f tier just because of the whole fact that you have to open up your inventory to switch between dual receiver and spinning up uh i'll be lenient and i'll put it in d tier uh next up we have Sweet business, sweet business. Uh, I think it's a fun exotic for sure. And if you have active war rig on as a titan, you can shoot forever. 
Patrol and Strikes, it, it does its job. It's definitely better than Suros. Um, I would I don't know if it's as good as like like Fighting Alliance is definitely up here, but like it's just it's it's just lackluster. Really, it would have been cool if it were like you know had the same damage as an LMG um, or as a heavy machine gun, but the fact that it doesn't uh, and it's just kind of like a meme weapon. Uh, it's not great. I mean, it can. It's good in patrol and strikes, where if you're at level or you're pretty much over leveled, and those um, forms of content, it does a ton of damage. But that's not the focus. So, yeah, a D tier for me. Next up in the auto rifle department, we have Tommy's matchbook, F tier. What more do I need to say? You're actively damaging yourself uh, in order to do more damage. Uh, because of this, you have the potential to die. I don't see why you would want an exotic that causes you to actively die. So Tommy's, that's an F for me. Um, I'm not going to be using exotics. I don't see anyone using this exotic that causes you to lose health. People want to stay alive. They want all their health. They're not going to be using an exotic like this. I know it's similar to Touch of Malice from D1, but like, I don't know. It just, the damage isn't there. Um, like there is with Touch of Malice. Like this, you're constantly low HP. At least with Malice, like I was, I'm pretty sure like, you know it would chip away your health over time match book you're like at low health all the time so you know uh not that great of an option to be honest and i believe in terms of the auto rifle department that is it so let's just double check here any more autos here i don't think so so uh for the counterpart of autos let's move into light machine guns light machine guns we have air apparent i know air apparent got in the catalyst a lot of people are like oh this is s tier or it's much better than you think unfortunately guys air apparent is not as good as you may think um it you waste so much ammo in order to do damage to things like majors it's it's useless against champions obviously and it's useless against bosses as well uh like you're wasting your time if you're using this even on a strike boss um and you're just wasting a, a slot and yes i know it gives you the arc shield but if your arc shield pops you're dead like and most content like there's so many arc enemies anyways you're just dead if you're using this thing and yeah i get it with the catalyst it like oh if your shield pops it like it refills your mag but who cares if your shield pops you're probably dead especially if you're playing end game content like raids nightfall hard mode activities you know being at level or under level you're probably just gonna die um when that shield breaks yeah it can be nice so you can take tank some things but the only potential air parent has in this game is in pvp and in pve it's just not there I think for it can excel in patrol and in strikes, but outside of that, it's D tier. Like it sucks. Um, it's not as good as people think. So the next uh, auto rifle we have here is Thunderlord. It looks like. Yep, Thunderlord. Thunderlord. It's a workhorse LMG. It, it, it can destroy ads in patrol and in strikes. Um, and in some raids, it's pretty useful. I like using it in Queenswalk for Last Wish and sometimes during Shiro Chi to clear all the ads because it just, the lightning strikes everywhere. Uh, and it shoots fast and it reloads fast because of Feeding Frenzy, especially when you're ad clearing. But LMGs right now, they're not good for boss damage because of the. Um, the modifier the nerf way back in forsaken that they've received where all lmgs do less damage to bosses 
uh, I'm not, this is not something I'm using in Nightfalls or anything of the like. It's, uh, it's better than Air Apparent, I'd say, but to say that it's better than, that it's on par with some of these C tier exotics, I'd say it's accurate. Yeah, I, I probably would take Thunderlord over a Cloud Strike over queen's breaker depending on the content that i'm doing thunderlord has that potential um i wouldn't say i'm always taking it over like queen's breaker or if it's always on par with queen's breaker it's definitely dependent on the content because again obviously you get more boss damage out of this than you are out of with this but this fills the role of ad clearing and dealing with things like majors you know and helping you stay alive and all that fun stuff it's just yeah, it's, it's like bottom of the pack, like C-. minus. Uh, and the last LMG I believe here is everyone's favorite, Xenophage. I still think Xenophage is S tier. Um, what more can I say? It's just... It's great in raid still. Um, even I think Master Vog, If I don't know how great it is in Master Vog, but you can one-shot the Oracles, so that's nice. It's a good substitute if you don't have access to something like Anarchy. Uh, for uh, damage, it's easy to use. Um, it's relatively easy to get because it comes from a quest. You don't have to buy it from the exotic kiosk. Uh, it's it's good for ad clear. You can combo it with certain mods like Wrath of Rasputin, but that's not a focus here. Um, but it can't. It has that potential to do well with certain builds. Um, on top of it already being a very good gun so s here for me and in terms of lmgs i believe that is it or heavy machine guns so next let's do sidearms a quick one sidearms we have devil's ruin devil's ruin um yeah it can shred with certain builds and yeah the laser can shred majors but that's really in patrol and strike mode activities um in terms of like raids you're not getting a lot of use out of this nightfalls maybe if you're trying to stun unstoppables but like with a freaking sidearm sidearms are not great in nightfalls unless you're doing like the adept nightfall where you're probably over leveled for that type of content hard mode activities probably has potential but i I personally do not use this weapon. I don't see other people using this weapon. And it's not even a gun. Like, in terms of slot, where Fighting Lion is, I take Fighting Lion any any day of the week over something like Devil's Ruin. So, like, like Devil's, it's, like, low. It's definitely low D tier. Like, I'm definitely going to take Fighting Lion over it, but I'm not going to deny that Devil's Ruin doesn't have some of that potential, you know, to melt majors being a primary uh but yeah d tier rat king rat king uh definitely doesn't see as much usage anymore you only really benefit when everyone else is using it i don't think it has a great ad clear either so for me rat king right now is f tier sorry to say only benefits when all your teammates are using it but solely looking at it it's just f tier and like I don't even know if it does enough damage anymore to like new grade bosses or anything like that. Um, maybe like in, back in the day, but like now, uh, I don't think Riot King's as good anymore. It's uh, F tier now, unfortunately. Uh, next sidearm we have here is the Cryothesia, the Stasis sidearm. Everyone thought it was going to be really good. And PvP ended up not being as great as people anticipated or thought it was going to be. That's because everyone's just overreacting about stasis at the time that it came out. Um, in terms of it, its performance, I'd say it just it's not good. Um, if anything, I'm definitely taking any of these D tier exotics over it. Uh, it, it's just not very good because especially when you freeze your targets with stasis you do less damage 
to them unless you're running the stasis fragment that causes your kinetic to do more damage against frozen targets you are actually hurting yourself by freezing targets um with cryoesia so yeah it's f tier um if you put it in any of the areas i look at throughout this tier list it's not excelling anywhere next up we have traveler's chosen traveler's chosen yes you can get your abilities back faster but uh sidearms sidearms in this game are like not good like i take any of these d tier weapons over traveler's chosen like i don't like it's probably like the the top of the f tier list here but it's like uh i mean i feel like i'm being too like too harsh putting in f tier at least you're getting ability regen so i will put it at d tier but other than that it's not doing anything for you uh yeah you can build into it but the focus of the tier list isn't on builds so that covers the sidearms so let's go into submachine guns another quick one so for the submachine guns we have risk runner risk runner i'd still say is a um it's a very good weapon um i wouldn't say it's on par with the b tiers here but i would say it's on par with the c tiers here um good survivability you know does a lot of damage arc chaining it's definitely something i'm taking over some of these d tiers unfortunately it only really works out if you're using um, if you're against arc enemies or if you throw a gr grenade on the ground to proc the arc conduction however if you are procking arc conduction and if you're using something like you know top tree storm color with um crown of tempest and you're procking conduction tines like it's a pretty damn good exotic um if you build right into it but again not focusing on the builds uh it's just like it's a good it's a good workhorse weapon i'd say um especially when you have the arc chaining up for sure and you've got that arc resist going so uh, c tier next up we have teraba teraba actually i think is kind of slept on uh teraba i'd say i wouldn't say it's a tier but i would definitely say it's b tier and if you build right into it it, it could be more like a or s tier. um definitely has high potential i would take it over something like cloud strike just because like it it can nuke over cloud strike even though you do have to be closer and you do have to have that perk proc it it shreds it absolutely shreds when it's got ravenous beast up uh in terms of end game content though i can't say i would take it in gms or if i would take it in maybe masters it might be okay especially if you're at level if you're under level i don't know if you would want to take teraba into that type of content but in terms of it's like in its slot i say the damage when you have rav beast proc is on on par or maybe slightly above the damage you get you're getting out of Jotun, out of um, telesto in the energy slot definitely you're doing better than polaris you're definitely doing better than cloud strike i, I believe um so yeah i'd say it's like a solid b tier and last we have huckleberry huckleberry i think is a good a tier um i know you're not doing as much damage as uh, huckleberry is but you do need to realize that the rampage on huckleberry is the pre-nerf rampage um if you don't know rampage was nerfed a very long time ago back in the day uh, rampage on legendary weapons is much weaker than the rampage on huckleberry the rampage on huckleberry is a lot stronger than what you get on legendary weapons and the fact that if you kill with huckleberry it automatically reloads the mag um from reserves so like infinite ammo and it spins up it shoots really fast it's and it creates orbs for you it's a very reliable weapon um but i would say putting it at a tier on par with some of these other weapons is a bit too much so i would say it's more in line um with the b tier weapons i would say it's interchangeable with outbreak or with like bastion uh, maybe hawk moon i would say hawk moon's like a b plus here 
and huckleberries more like on the end of the spectrum of the bees. So I believe that covers the uh, submachine guns. So next up, let's move on to shotguns uh, and we'll finish up with the rocket launchers. So with shotguns with Acreus, actually uh, clan leader, he used Acreus in a master uh, mode nightfall we did. And while it does nuke um, champions when they're stunned, uh, that is being at level under level definitely it's gonna suck and the fact and the reason it's gonna suck is the fact that it's handling time sucks the time it takes for you to whip out this damn thing even if you have double dexterity mods on uh, to whip it out faster like it sucks and yes i know you can quick draw swap or whatever but most people aren't going to be doing that okay when it comes to a weapon like this it just it's so fucking slow to bring out like yeah i dropped an f-bomb for this thing it's just so slow um it's not very good for ad clear because you're wasting you're really wasting it on ad clear yes it can nuke the ads and it can nuke some of the majors and mini bosses uh, but you're kind of wasting it there in that department i i would say it's definitely better than these weapons it, it is definitely better than you know these heavies because it has that potential in masters um especially when champions are stunned for you and you can get up close and personal. But the handling is kind of holding it back and the fact that it's a shotgun, a heavy shotgun, it's just, there are better options for that slot. Next up, we have Lord of Wolves. Lord of Wolves, I'd say, is like a C tier. Um, I would say it's like damage on par to Cloud Strike. However, it's not as safe as Cloud Strike because with Cloud Strike, you can do damage at range with lord of wolves uh you have to get a little bit more up close and personal but it still does a ton of damage um it's, it really hasn't been nerfed until they nerfed the ammo economy of specials so uh yeah i i'd say it's like c tier um kind of regretting that crimson being at c tier but i'm just gonna keep crimson at c tier uh for night right now um just for this tier list i'll uh I'll revisit it in a future tier list. Next up in the shotgun department, we have Chaperone. Chaperone has that potential being a slug rifle. Um, yeah, it's got good ad clearing, can do well against majors, but it's like you can use a legendary slug shotgun over this, and that's it, it suffers the same issue as Cloud Strike. So, really, that's where this tier is coming from. So, D tier. And you're not going to be using Chaperone against bosses or like um, champions in Nightfalls or hard mode content. Um, you might, you could use it in hard mode content if you're at level, but if you're under level, I would recommend against it. So that's a D tier for me. And usage metrics, people are using this in PVP and not PVE. So yeah, D tier. Fourth Horseman, unfortunately this one usage metrics are down. Not a lot of people are using it. However, with Fourth Horseman, does a ton of damage especially of the catalyst but i don't know if most people can even get the catalyst so but if you do have the catalyst it does a ton of damage this thing still nukes it's very useful in some dungeons uh like hard mode activity hard mode activities i consider dungeons so it's, it's pretty good in some of the dungeons still um but ammo economy is pretty crap it reloads really slowly uh probably doing more damage than cloud strike so i would say it's like c tier i probably take it over a lot of the d tier um weapons in terms of it shotguns like it it's comparable to that of lord of wolves however i would say lord of wolves has a slightly better ammo economy than uh fourth horseman does so that's really what's keeping it uh, keeping it in line in the c tier there next up we have tractor cannon Tractor Cannon, uh, still pretty decent uh, it, since it debuffs, and you can do that 20% bonus damage to debuff targets. However, its usefulness now uh, is overshadowed by other exotics such as Divinity and just mods in general that just do Tractor Cannon's job. Um, unfortunately as a heavy like i would take cloud strike over this 
like it's it's kind of in like suffering just it's like an old exotic it's like on par with sleeper right now really in, in that regard it's just it needs like a buff or something or a re rework or like it needs to do at least like i don't know 30 percent debuff or something like that um or do what it did in the old days which was like you do 50 percent more damage if you're using void damage on the debuff target that you did with tractor cannon that was nice but 50 percent is a lot of bonus damage to be doing uh and the last shotgun we have is duality duality just i know it's a slug but it's like again with chaperone like you know there's legendary weapons that can do it better so you know it's it, the same reasoning i gave chaperone d tier is duality i mean yes you can argue duality has the buckshot um option as well in addition to its slug option but it's just uh legendary weapons can do it better it, 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 these suffer from the issue that fighting lion suffers from is that a legendary weapon can do its job better um and with better perks and the last tier everyone's favorite rocket launchers first up we have deathbringer deathbringer i know a lot of people want me to give it s tier um in terms of metrics of like use i think it's definitely used by a lot of people still for sure um it's a little tricky to use against champions especially when they become unstunned because it takes a while for the orbs to fall but if you have the catalyst definitely is a very good option i think it definitely can out dps xenophage however moving into the future depending on how mechanics work for certain bosses and um i don't know just like how often bosses are moving around like um and how often like how long your dps phase lasts i don't know how great deathbringer will be in the future but right now it's pretty solid um or like i'd say like low s tier for me so deathbringer yeah with catalyst now it's s tier um moving on we have warcliffe coil we're in the home stretch here i know it's been a long one but i just really want to go in depth with my guide so i do apologize if you've listened this far into the guide uh we have warcliffe coil warcliffe coil uh, it doesn't do as much bonus damage to uh bosses anymore so since it doesn't do that bonus damage anymore it's really uh i mean it's good for ag clear and like nuking bosses and strikes and like if you're up close and personal with champions but like outside of that uh you're not really getting your money's worth you know with warcliff i'd say it's like yeah i'd say it's like d tier right now really like it's below fighting line like i take prospector over warcliff quell just because at least prospector does its full amount of damage to a boss that work of coil can't do uh truth sucks i mean if you build around it it can be good but it sucks right now i'm not going to go into that uh really two-tailed two-tailed i think is a it's definitely a tier um sometimes i don't think it does as much damage as it could be doing but if you build into it yeah it could, has potential to be s tier but again not talking about builds i think it's a tier uh it's not that great for ad clear but like it can do it because it's a rocket launcher um it definitely is very good against champions i've used it in the past improving grounds against champions it's very good um for uh deleting champions it's good for usage against bosses um don't know how great it is though um obviously it's not class outclassing deathbringer so it deserves to be below below deathbringer so a tier uh hopefully you can get a catalyst in the future that gives it an arc rocket so an additional rocket on top of what it already has but i think it's a it's low a tier like a minus for me and then the last exotic 
uh, the most elusive exotic for some people is Eyes of Tomorrow. Eyes of Tomorrow suffers the same issue as Warcliffe Coil, but at least it's got better tracking than Warcliffe Coil. At least you can track multiple targets with the Eyes of Tomorrow. And because of that, I'm just going to give it the C tier. Um, it's not very great in raids because, again, like Warcliffe Coil, it's got that neutered boss damage. Uh, Nightfalls, I think you still do enough damage to the champions, but it's uh, you know still neutered. Hard mode activities, I might use it. Um, can't say I've seen a lot of people use it just because people are probably just so fed up. By the time they actually do finally get it to drop from Deep Stone, they just lock it away in their vault forever. It's pretty good for patrol, you know, and using it in strikes where it will do full damage, but, you know, it's the better Warcliffe coil right now, I think. Uh, and yeah, that's where we're left off here. Is uh, This is the patch 3.2.1 tier list. Um and yeah thanks for watching if you made it this far if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel but uh yeah this is the patch um 3.2.1 tier list i will be doing the armor ones but i will be doing those when witch queen drops because of how little armor changes between seasons um Weapons get changed around a lot more in this game than armor pieces. So expect another uh, tier list when we're halfway through season 15. Um, probably right before Witch Queen drops. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.